Leave a compass on its own, and eventually it will point north, aligning itself with the Earth's magnetic field. Move that same compass around a magnet, and it'll point away from the north pole of the magnet. And toward the south pole. Depending on the orientation of magnets, the compasses, and therefore the magnetic field, shift their orientations as a result. In a moment, I'm going to show you still photos of these same orientations. The first one is going to be north and south poles. The next one is south and south poles. And then the last one is North and North Poles. Cool. So I wanted to uh, backtrack a little bit and uh, remind you guys about electric fields, right? Remember, so if you have negative charges, the electric field goes into the charge. That's just by convention. So here are two negative charges, and of course they repel. And field theory can be used to show that by, you can see all these fields right here. The fields aren't lining up, and so you get this repulsion uh, uh, because of it. So that's kind of a use of field theory right there. Uh, and then also, if you've got a positive charge, the electric field goes out of those charges. Uh, and then if you've got a negative charge, again, the electric field goes into those charges. And this time now, the field lines line up. And if the field lines line up, they'll fuse in towards each other. And that's kind of how field theory explains attraction uh, right there. So that's, that's with using uh, electric charges. Again, by convention, the field goes out of positive charges and into negative charges. And as you can see, we see a similar thing with the, magnet, uh, the magnetic fields. So um, here's a magnet, a picture of a magnet right here, and then uh, all this here are basically just iron fillings uh, uh, that you see. And uh, just like I showed you before, those are the compasses there. And you can see um, that the compass points toward the South Pole, but they point away from the North Pole. So, and those compasses all are aligned along the magnetic field. They're all aligned along the magnetic field, and they point uh, in the same direction as the magnetic field. So we're going to establish a bit of a convention here. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, a, another thing, so yeah, the compasses point along the magnetic field, uh, and their size, how big the, the, the field is, can be shown by how big these vectors are at these different points. So uh, yeah, the size of the arrow shows the strength. Um, and as you can probably imagine, right, the closer you get to the magnet, the greater the strength. It is a distant dependent force. We'll talk about the equation uh, later. Um, so, but by convention, magnetic fields go out of north poles and into south poles. Again, this is a convention, just like we did with the electric field and positive charges and negative charges goes out of North Poles into South Poles. Um, although there is kind of this stuff inside the magnet that's kind of interesting, is that the field actually keeps going this way. But then on the outside, it goes out of the North into the South, out of the North into the South, out of the North into the South. Um, yeah, and, and there you go. So again, what's kind of interesting is that field theory, again, show gives a, a, a somewhat explanation as to why you get attraction uh, uh, um, and repulsion. So if you have a north and a north pole uh, 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 pointed at each other, you're going to get repulsion, right? South-south is going to repel, and north-south attracts. Uh, well, yeah, like poles repel, unlike poles attract. That's, that's basically what you can get to. Uh, so if I got north and north, you can see the field lines here are not lining up. The, they're, 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 they're going, whoa, and shooting out, whoa, and shooting out uh, uh, right there. So they don't line up, and so you get that repulsion effect as a result. Um, but if I had north and south pointing in the, uh, uh, toward each other, you can see that these field lines start to kind of fuse into one another. And when you get that, basically they're just going to combine, and I'm going to get those same field lines as if I had just one giant magnet. And so you get attraction as a result. 
yeah. All right. Uh, last thing I kind of wanted to bring up here, don't scratch your head too much about this, but if you, you know, we, we, we talked about the, um, the compass always aligning along the Earth's magnetic field. So the Earth does generate a magnetic field. We'll talk more about that in a moment or yeah, in, uh, later in the week. Uh, so if you were standing on the Earth like you do, apparently this would be on the water, your compass would point in this direction. The compass is aligned along the Earth's magnetic field and it points towards the North Pole. Well, this is the geographic North Pole that it points to. However, if the Earth was actually one big magnet, uh, that then the, the North part of the compass would be pointing toward the, well, that's essentially the magnetic south pole of the Earth. Um, and then this is the magnetic north pole of the, uh, uh, of the Earth here. And uh, uh, so I know, again, don't worry too much about it, but it's just kind of an interesting uh, a little thing. Why do we call this the North Pole? Well, because when we had our compasses, when we had our little uh, uh, compasses, the compass always pointed in the north direction. So we said, oh, that'll be the north, this will be called, we'll call this the North Pole then, and we'll call, you know, the other part the South Pole. And, you know, yeah. Uh, so the, the other thing kind of to, to, to bring up here is that um, the magnetic, uh, um, the, w w the magnetic south pole is actually not located exactly at the geographic north pole of the Earth. It's a little bit off to the side over here. Um, actually, and it also moves from time to time. Um, in fact, we've actually been seeing uh, the, the movement of the, the poles uh, of the Earth, the magnetic poles of the Earth, uh, moving quite drastically in recent years. It's been getting kind of faster and faster, which is sort of interesting. Um, yeah, but all right. Uh, enough on that. Last thing I wanted to bring up here was that um, symbols for magnetic fields. Uh, so magnetic fields, the symbol we use, of course, B. It is a vector as well. Uh, so yes, B, sorry, there you go. Uh, and the units we use are uh, Tesla. Some of you will be happy to, to say Tesla. Tesla, yeah like the, the uh, uh, scientist who you may or may not have heard of, but you're sure you all know about the car. So, and then the symbol we use is capital T. Um, sometimes a uh, uh, um, magnetic field is also measured in Gauss. I think I'm spelling that right, Gauss. Uh, it's a capital G. Um, but typically, typically we'll, we'll, we'll be using Tesla. Uh, yeah, so there you go. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.